Hi, I'm Sharad Kutun and welcome to Let's Talk, the show that brings you the most important conversations of the day and what could be more important than books and stories and ideas and illustration. They come together in graphic novel form and comic format. Help me in this conversation, I have the co-founder of uh, Mapla Comics. He is Amir Hafizi. Uh, he's also one of the writers of an upcoming fantasy light novel series called Nafiri. Uh, he, together with Fairul Nizam and Anis Suhaila, are members of uh, Mapla Comics. Mapla Comics, spelled like maple, but actually pronounced Mapla like as in the Tamil uh, word for bridegroom. Bridegroom, yes. Tell us, I mean, let's start <laughs> with that. I mean, why did you call your <laughs> comic company um, um, you know, uh, using a Tamil word. Uh, okay, uh, the thing is, uh, when Farunizam and I uh, conceived the idea for the for the for the comic uh, comics company, we were always having our meetings at a maple. Now we are old people, so we come from the nineties, uh, where mama restaurants or Indian restaurants are all uh, lumped together as maples. Oh, really? uh, and yeah, the reason okay. being because whenever the, the waiter uh, comes up with uh, something hot or he wants people to get out of the way, he would say, Maple, Maple, Maple. You know, oh, right. Lovely. We, okay. Yes, uh, yeah. Okay. So we actually were mm. colleagues at uh, a newspaper uh, some yeah. uh, years ago, right? Yeah. And uh, so you have uh, an interesting start because mm. you, you have, uh, you know, part of you is a journalist, part mm. of you, you, and you work many jobs, I understand. Mm -hmm. But tell us, how did you get into comics and why, mm. why has comics become an important part of? your mm. professional life okay uh well i've always been into comics since i was young and then uh, in 2014 i had a massive heart attack so i almost died one third of my heart is dead and after being discharged i survived obviously and after being discharged uh, i actually called up roy uh Fairunizam. i said uh, roy uh, i want to do this before i die so i emotionally blackmail him to uh, actually uh, pushing the titles forward because otherwise we would be waiting for another few years after that. Hopefully some people would have finished their comics but we were lucky and we got our first uh, title published uh, in December that year. I had the high tech in August. So it goes to show that if you really want something, then you can actually do it in four months. Okay, absolutely. A wonderful, inspiring story. Now, just, let's uh, look at your, your childhood because I think a lot of us mm. have uh, childhood influences. And I remember mm. the rich kids in my class always mm. had Bino and they mm. had access to that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we always, with, with great envy, mm -hmm. would look at mm. their uh, comic collection. Uh, where were you getting your comics from? What were you uh, reading? Was it Japanese? Was it American? Oh. What was it? I try to get my hands on anything I can because my parents don't actually give me any money at all. I had no pocket money, uh, so I would beg, uh, borrow and whatever else. I had uh, gil some gila gila, issues of gila gila, which were not considered children's material at the time. It was quite political, it was quite sophisticated. There was also... I think Zuna worked for Gila Gila for a while, didn't he? Uh, or possibly. Anyway. Possibly. Yeah. I, I preferred Long though. The Malay Dilemma series that he did in uh, Gila Gila was fantastic. Uh, and then there's also like Batu Api, Geli Hati, all these things. So it was local comics that you had your exposure to most. Yes, I read a translated Iron Man uh, somewhere in uh, in a coffee shop somewhere in my kampung, but that was that was it. It was later when I uh, uh, the Sun had this magazine. Remember? Yes, I so, worked for it. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I, I really appreciated that because uh, it was the my first exposure to some really wonderful comics like the Sandman. It was really good. Um, I was in high school, so we had that, and a lot of my friends had more money, so they bought all these Hong Kong comics. So I was also into Hong Kong comics. Uh, some of them bought manga, Japanese manga, and I was also into manga. And magazine had these like Western comics. I was like, yeah, it's too expensive to buy uh, <laughs> because I couldn't even afford like three ringgit, uh, one ringgit eighty cents for the Hong Kong comics. So and Asmi Sharum, uh, who's now with the, the Election Commission, mm. uh, who's a law lecturer, used to write reviews of yeah, comics yeah. Uh, for the Sun newspaper. So, okay, so for many of us, comics are something we leave behind, mm -hmm. kind of graduate from comics, mm -hmm. but there are obviously people who stay with comics. Mm -hmm. Comics is a lifelong obsession. Why is that so? I mean, what is it that's special about comics? Well, it's a, it's a medium. Uh, just like any, anything else. It's like movies, it's like books, it's like songs, poetry, whatever else. Uh, it is a medium and uh, the thing about it, the, the cool thing about it for me is that not many people are into it, not many people are doing it. So it's easy for you to be uh, distinguished uh, by uh, claiming this in the name of your own or something like that. And also because of the 
specific things. Uh, this one goes into Scott McCloud's theory about comics and understanding comics and reinventing comics about the very spe uh, very special ways uh, comics can actually uh, tell stories uh, between it actually the, st the movements, the emotions, the sound and everything else. The movie actually happens in your head. It is between the gutters of panels, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. So. Uh, if we want to talk about that, it will take about... So your mind sort of animates what you see yes. is that is static in the, in the different panels on yes. the page. I, I want to ask you about, you know, developing this idea. So Nafiri <coughs> has been um, uh, reported as a crowdfunding success, mm -hmm. and that's how, in fact, in many ways, you're, you're on the show because mm -hmm. of it. Uh, I believe the uh, illustrator that you work with, mm -hmm. uh, Zam, Zami, um, um, M. Zane, mm -hmm. uh, conceived of it two decades ago. It's like, no. a long gestation period oh, uh, for an idea. Is that, is that true? Is I, uh, I conceived the story two decades ago, and I approached Zamzami with it after he rejected another one of my stories. Uh, so I've always wanted to work with Zamzami. He's, a, I think, one of the best artists in Malaysia, honestly speaking. You can see from his artwork that it's really good, he's really detailed, he really puts into it. It takes a long time, but you have to wait for, for great things to happen. So I Okay, so you conceive the idea. Yes. Okay. And then and what is the relationship between a writer and illustrator? Uh, okay. Uh, for this, because it's a light novel, what I do is uh, I we have l long discussions, long late night discussions uh, about the characters I want to do and he comes up with the character designs first and then I um, about the story, I tell him the story, he reads the stories as well and we each pick a scene that he wants to illustrate because the format of a light novel is it's a short novel with illustrations so which illustrations uh, which scenes that needs to be illustrated um, actually depends on the agreement of both of us so right. it's a it's symbiotic so it's symbiotic uh, mm -hmm. you're kind of giving each other because clearly mm -hmm. when you write you have an image in your head as well of what mm -hmm. your character looks no, like yeah. but they're not just simply slavish to your yeah. creative imagination no. are they for, for example one of the more more popular characters among uh, online readers uh, so far i mean online fans online followers of the series so far is this guy called Puing. so i envision him as a short bald guy uh, he's the strongest and he wields a big sword or something like that. So Zamzami took that and said, no, I don't want to do short ball guy. So he drew this really beefy, hunky guy. And that is the image that people latch on to. So... Were you disappointed? Were you? I mean, no. because you had this idea of... A, I mean, the, the, there are traditions where mm -hmm. the hero <coughs> doesn't look like a conventional hero, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, I mean, I think the French are famous for their kind of odd-looking mm. heroes, right? Um, so, in that tussle, how did, it, how did uh, Zamzami win out? No, uh, I, I, I bow to a better interpretation. I mean, it's like, uh, if, it, if it makes a better product, why not? You know, if he drew it, if they drew him as like some old guy, you no, know, it doesn't fit into the whole young heroes kind of thing. So that wouldn't work. But he interpreted it into something that is really, really gripping. Um, that character has garnered so much attention from people, uh, you know, and uh, it's one of our flagship uh, images when we want to pitch Nafidi to anyone. Say, look at this, and they were like, wow. Okay, wonderful. Okay, we'll take a short break okay. and we'll be back with more. I'm speaking to Amir Hafizi, uh, co-founder of Maple Comics. Stay tuned.